Yeah, here we go, Casey. Cosmo Macero of O'Neill Associates, Peter Cadges of the Boston Phoenix, talking about how we both want to get rid of the winter coats for the season, yet can't do it. Almost hung it up yesterday or the day before, but uh, can't do it. That's right. It's freezing down here. Nonetheless, uh, let's get started, boys, because we got a lot to get to this morning. Start with the L word. That would be Libya. Peter Cadges, I will ask you the question that everybody is asking. What is our policy with Libya, and does the president understand our policy with Libya? I think this is called improvisation. Make it up as you go. I guess the policy is very simple. Um, get rid of Gaddafi. Who we replace him with um, remains to be seen. Um, it, it, it's somewhat mystifying, and I, I'm a, a bit surprised that a nation that seemed to have had enough with our war in Afghanistan and our war in Iraq um, it is curiously silent about this. And the president's accepting. rhetoric sounds an awful lot like the previous president's rhetoric going into those two years. Well, I, I, he's more circumspect. Um, he is more s circumspect. Um, but Hillary Clinton appears to have been leading the charge here. And if people remember during the election, she was much more hawkish. Listen, the whole Middle East is a very complicated situation. Um, n no one knows what's going to come out of this. Now, uh, Gaddafi ups the ante by uh, starting to massacre his own people. Um, but if China turned around and started massacring its people, we wouldn't be in there. There's a simple reason why right. we wouldn't. We can't be there while we can be in Libya. On the other hand, Cosmo, you got the pottery barn theory, as Colin Powell puts it. You break it, you own it. Are we going to break Libya, and are we now going to have a third country that we're trying to fix? I think it's possible. You know, a lot of good journalism out there today on this. One of my favorite pieces by Jonah Goldberg in the LA Times, using a basketball analogy, in the fog of those first weeks of what looked like a rebellion, now looks like a civil war, he suggests that's the time to act, kind of a fast break, move quickly. Now it's a little bit more complicated, a little bit more difficult, um, because you're not clear what the end game is, and, and it's not necessarily easy to get there. You know, we, we've been bombing Libya since the Reagan administration when they blew up his palace, blew up his, uh, his round disco bed. It's going to be harder now because in that sort of fog of those first few days probably would have been the best time to act. Uh, Congressman Lynch, the first guy that I heard, and one of the few congressmen that I've heard that says, we shouldn't have done this. We shouldn't have gone there. It's against our Constitution. They are not a threat to us. We shouldn't be sending troops in there. The Herald today ripping him. What With friends like Lynch, Obama doesn't need enemies is their, uh, their context of their editorial. Listen, Congressman Lynch brings up a very important point. Uh, by the way, a point echoed. Uh, in the Globe's editorial today, saying that all, the Constitution grants war powers only to Congress. And I have to say, it's about time someone in Congress raised the issue about why wasn't Congress consulted about this. The President can act only if there's an imminent threat to the U.S., which no one could argue is the case in Libya. So people, I, I think people will draw conclusions on both sides here. The Herald has drawn theirs today. There's a legitimate debate here. You know, yeah, but I, 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 used, I used to say that, or I've been known to say that no, no president in the past uh, ha, uh, half century has been challenged as much as President Bush was. i got to say, President Obama, the diplomatic challenges in all these different hotspots, uh, I, I put him right up there in terms of how he's being challenged. Today. The defense, I guess, on his policy, is there's a no win here. I mean, what are you going to do, sit by and watch people get massacred? Or are you going to get involved when you've told people that is what you wouldn't do? I, I think the end game here has to be that Gaddafi's gone. It becomes much more difficult now than it was even three weeks ago. All right, let's get to issue three because we're running short on time already. Charlie Sheen, let's get to uh -huh, the local news. news, the domestic issue. The rumor is that CBS wants him back with two and a half men. Let's pretend like nothing ever happened. You buying the rumor? Why not? Crazier things have happened. I mean, Hollywood's an insane place. TV's an insane business, except for television news, of course. Um... I don't know what to believe and not to believe. The other thing is, do I really care? And the answer is, no. Well, I think CBS cares because I think they know that it was a number one rated show already. At least in the short term, it would be even bigger ratings, Cosmo. Yeah. What's his, what's his co-star's name? John Cryer. I hope you have a good financial advisor. That show's done. There will be a spinoff. It will be called Winning. It'll probably debut to the highest ratings in CBS history. And then it will sort of settle back to modest success. I think Two and a Half Men is done. It's now the Charlie Sheen show. One and a Half Men right here compared to what you Listen, used to Charlie Sheen was, uh, uh, you know, is going to be appearing live here. They sold out overnight. How can there huge. not be a TV show called Winning with Charlie Some Sheen? Some version thereof. And the sellout is amazing. 
childish. No one knows what he's going to say. It's sort of like it's no true. one knows what we're doing in Libya. They're connected. Well done. Lastly, gentlemen, I know you're both big coffee drinkers. Starbucks on Brookline Ave. Guy walks in, throws up some money in the air, says, I'm rich, walks out. Everybody in line sort of looks at the money, looks around. Finally, the manager comes over and scoops up the money. What would you have done, Cosmo? As far as coffee, I don't touch this stuff. Nonetheless, wherever I'm standing in line, if there's a pile of ones in the ground and there's a lot of people around, I'm, I'm not diving for it. I'm just, I'm just not doing that. I mean, if I'm alone on the street and I see a 20, well, okay, maybe I'll pick that up. I'll look Maybe around. you'll pick up a I'll 20. Look wow. I'll look hey, listen, the crowd. most important... The consulting business is good, in a, apparently. In a crowd? The, the most important thing here is the Starbucks manager picked it up and said... We're going to donate this to Japanese relief. I think that's not only a stroke of genius, but it shows real humanity. A charitable move. I might have, if the manager bought everyone a cup of coffee, but then again, that would benefit the Starbucks bottom line, which doesn't need any help. <laughs> You're all over. You're making friends real quick, Kyle. Are you sure he's not contemplating a political career? I'm wondering. Because he'd be very good at it. Peter Cadges of the Phoenix Cosmo Macero Vanilla Associates. Let's see if I can get a one out quickly and drop it in front of you, Cosmo. Change, you can believe it. <laughs>